Hello everyone, this is Manoj. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we'll see and learn how we can create a .NET Core Web API project using Entity Framework and Code First approach. Meaning, we will create our models and based on our models, we'll try to create a database in SQL Server. All right. So far, I have opened a new instance of Visual Studio 2022. So create a new project. And from here, we'll select our .NET Core Web API. Click on Next. Let me give name. Entity Framework Code First App. Click on Next. Let me uncheck this HTTPS. Click on Create. So it will create a brand new ASP.NET Core Web API project for us. So let's wait for a moment. So you can see our project has been created. And when you create a new ASP.NET Core Web API project, you will see and you will get these kind of file and folder structure. If I expand controllers, so we'll get a API controller called weather forecast controller. We have got app settings.json, we have got program.cs, all right? And this is the default page. Let's close it. Now, the first step is right click on your project. Manage NuGet packages. We have to install three packages and those packages are first entity framework code.sql server, entity framework code.tools and extensions.configuration. All right. So let's install one by one. So let's copy the first one. Go to browse paste and it will search so this is the first one make sure you will use the correct version so let me choose 6.0.0 and install so this will install your 6.0.0 version i accept and let's copy the another one which is entity framework code dot tools i think this is installed Let's browse another one, tools, anti framework tools. Again, choose the right version, install, I accept. Let's copy the third one, extensions dot configuration. Finished, configuration. And 6.0.0 install. Done. So we have done our first step. Now let's close it. And in your app, add a new folder and give it a name models. And let's add a first model class, add class. I'm giving it name users. You can give any meaningful name which will suit you. So our model has been created. So let's add some properties. So the first property would be ID and also decorate with the key because that will be our auto incremented column in the backend. For that we have to add one namespace which is system.componentModel.data annotations. Now let's add another property. So to create a property, we have a shorthand. Just type prop and then hit tab key. So it will create your complete property. Then you can change your data type and the property name. So I'm giving name. Let me copy this and let's change it to contact number. All right. For the time being, I'm only using three properties. All right, let's save. Now, in the models folder, add another class. And this class we will use for our DB context. So let me give it a name, user context. Add. And this user context class will inherit our DB context. So DB context. For that, we have to inherit a namespace, which is Microsoft.NTFramework core. 
so just hit enter it will automatically add see here the namespace has been added now inside this user context we have to create the constructor to create a constructor again we have a short end just type ctor and hit tab it will create a constructor you see now inside this parameter we have to include rdb context options so this one and give it a name like options and this will inherit our base options class all right now the constructor part is done now we have to add a db set entity for our users class so first let's add a specifier like public now db set inside this we have to give our class which is this users so users and users get set save now if you see over here it says non nullable property users must contain a non null value when existing constructor all right and if you see users model you can see a green line you can see it's a kind of warning all right so how we can remove it for that right click on your project go to properties and in the properties so scroll down you see here nullable that is a property and as of now it is enable so you can make it disable from here so disable and now just save the project close it now if you go back to your model see that warning has gone if you see your context class that warning has gone from here also all right so we are done with our models part now the next thing is go to your app.settings.json we have to create a connection string so simply type connection string hit enter and here we have to give our connection string name so the first one is let me give it name db con and here we have to pass our details so the first property is server and open your sql server click on connect database engine so this is your server name so you can copy your own server name paste it over here now next is database so which database you want to create so let me give entity framework core db or let's say underscore db so database is done now third is if you notice let me again open this i'm using windows authentication as the authentication method all right so we don't need to pass username and password but we have to give integrated security true so we are done with our app settings dot json we have given our details of our sql server now the next step is open your program.cs we have to register our user context inside our program.cs so here build dot services dot add db context and here we have to pass our user context class so simply type user context so for that we have to import our namespace because this class is in models folder all right as you can see the imported namespace and now we have to give our we have to use our in connection string so for that we have to use x dot use sql server and inside this we have to give our connection string so builder dot configuration dot get connection string and inside this we have to give our connection string name which you will get from here so this is your connection string name so copy and paste it over here done so we are done with our injection of our user context class in program.cs all right so let's build this project first let's see if there is an error or not so build succeeded all right now go to tools new get package manager package manager console and here let's run our migration so add hyphen 
migration and let me give the name as init if you see when this migration will run successfully so here we'll get a migration folder so let's run this command first so build had started build succeeded and it will give us the complete string or you can say the script of our database the operation is successful now you see here in this solution explorer we have got a migration folder let's expand it so we have got two files so let's open this see we have got a complete script of our based on our model so name is users and we have three properties id name contact number all right and also let's open this user context model snapshot so here you see we have id property contact property name and this id is also a key and the table is users all right so let's close both of them now again open package manager console now we have to run a command to create a database so for that update hyphen database before that let's go to sql server and open databases and see there is no database with this name entity framework core hyphen db all right so you see in this list we don't have any database with the name entity framework core all right now go back to visual studio and execute this command so update database enter so build had started it will execute all the script in this package manager console you see the script is being executed done now go back to sql server and let's refresh this database refresh so now you see we have got our database as entity framework core underscore db all right you see the name is identical now if i expand this we'll see a users table inside this tables folder with all the columns as we gave property in the users model so as you can see we have got our table let's expand it and in the columns we'll see all three fields id name contact number let's also try to run it so new query select star from users and make sure you select the right database entity framework core db and execute this perfect id name contact number all right so now let's go back to visual studio and here in this controller let's add a new controller so right click on this folder add controller select api and api controller empty click on add change the name as users controller add So here, this is our newly added controller. So now let's add our user context first. So private read only user context and create an object. So user context. And now let's add a constructor to initialize this user context class. So CTOR and inside this we have to use our user context as parameter so save now let's create our first api as http get so http get let's also give a route get users and public list users get users and here return user context dot users dot to list save so this is our get users and now let's also add a 
put API for to add a new user so HTTP post and let's give a route add user public string add user and here we have to pass our users class as we will take the name and contact number property from the front end whether it is react.js or your jquery or your angular all right so string response is equal to string dot empty and return let's say user added and here user context dot users dot add and inside the parameter we have to pass this users class object and after that user context dot save changes save so we have created two apis one to get all the users second to add a new user all right so let's try to see how these apis will work so let's build the project and we'll run it and in 6.0 version the swagger is already added so you don't need to add the additional packages to uh, use the swagger feature so let's run it and we'll test both the apis from swagger and so swagger is loading yeah so we have two apis one the get second one is post so first let's add a new user so try it out and we don't need to pass this id to let me remove it and let me add my name Manoj Deshwal let's say contact number 10101010 and now click on execute so what you will see and return a now response you see user added we got this response and the status code is 200 all right let's go to SQL server and execute this so we have got one record as Manoj Deshwal and this contact number perfect now let's open this get users and try it out click on execute we'll see the single record over here as a response perfect we have got our response nice so both the APIs are working so let's stop the solution and let's add another get api to get a single record so http get and our route should be get user and here public users get user and here we have to pass any id so int id return so user context dot users dot where we have to use our lambda expression so x dot id is equal to id dot first or default save so our single user api is ready save now let's try to create a put api so the http verb should be http put and let's give a route update user and here let's add an api method so public string update user and this will take a users class as input so user and here so user context dot entry and here we have to pass this object dot state is equal to 
entity state dot modified because we are trying to update the same entity and here user context dot save changes and return user updated save so our put api is also ready to update an existing record now last one is delete so http delete that is the http verb and let's give a route so route delete user and public string delete user users user and here user context dot remove and pass user as object dot users dot remove and user context dot save changes and finally return user deleted save so we have done all the apis get all users get single user add a new user update existing user and also delete an existing user all right let's save and try to build build succeeded let's run the project So Swagger is loaded and we can see all the APIs. So let's try to add one more object and in the name let me give Virat Kohli and execute. So this will add a new record in our database with the name Virat Kohli. So you see user added now try to get all the users and we will see an array with two users perfect this is one this is two perfect get all is working add is working now let's try to find users so get user try it out and here let me pass id one which is Manoj's id so you see i have got a record with the details like Manoj Deshwal and if I try to pass ID to execute so you see I'm getting the record with the name Virat Kohli perfect now that is also working now try to update a user try it out so let's say in my database I have two records all right so let me change uh, I want to update record of this first row with the ID one so I have to pass ID as one and let me change my name let i only want to give my first name and i want to change my phone number click on execute user updated perfect now execute this you see my name and contact number both are replaced with these value perfect so our update is also working now let's try to execute our delete API. Oh, okay. I think I have to change something in delete. Actually, we don't need to pass this complete user class. We can pass int ID. And here we can create a users class object. So users user is equal to user context dot users dot where again lambda expression x dot x dot id is equal equal id dot first or default perfect 
so now what it will do it will check if there is any user in our database or not with this id or not uh, let's also make a check if user is not equal null then we'll perform our deletion operation if there is no user we can simply return no user found save i hope you understand this this is very straightforward let's run the project again and now we'll pass only id of a user to delete it all right so open delete and try it out let's say if i pass 5 which is not present in our table you see there is no user with the id 5 but still if i try to execute it says no user found all right now let me give id 2 which belongs to this user virat kohli and if i try to execute you see user deleted and let's refresh this command see that virat has been deleted perfect so this is how you can create your all APIs using .NET Core project in Entity Framework and Code First approach. All right, now if you want me to create a React.js project and consume all those APIs like a, we can say an employee management system, so please comment in the comment box or I have given my WhatsApp number so you can contact me on WhatsApp number if you have any kind of requirement with this. So this is about today's video. I hope you like it. If you did so, hit the like button, share, comment. And if you haven't subscribed my channel, please subscribe. I need your help and support. So I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.